Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be having a gentleman by the name of Professor Norman Daumier, uh, Professor of Modern European History at the University of Stuttgart in Germany. Uh, he's going to be talking about collaboration between the Associated Press and Nazi Germany. Professor. There we are. <clears throat> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, dear organizers, thanks for having me. <clears throat> As we know, since 2017, Associated Press, today still the biggest news agency in the world, had a secret deal with Nazi Germany even after the United States entered the war in December 1941. This secret cooperation lasted until the very end of the Nazi regime in April, May 1945. They exchanged, this I can't uh, unfortunately due to time restrictions go into detail here, maybe later in, in private discussions, they exchanged news photos every day via Lisbon and then uh, also via Stockholm until the fall of uh, the Hitler regime. So the whole American allied neutral press was full of uh, Nazi photos until 1945 and vice versa. The, uh, the German press, also the press in the occupied countries, was full of uh, American, British uh, news photos. And strangely enough, this deal uh, had not been discovered until 2017, although it was an open secret, at least in AP circles. And in fact, because I saw the Hitler-Stalin pact there, all these photos from the Hitler-Stalin or Molotov-Ribbentrop pact were taken by Helmut Laux. Um, you're the first audience I tell this today, by Helmut Laux, the personal photographer of uh, Ribbentrop. Um, and this is the very man who then administered the, uh, took over the AP office in Berlin in uh, December 1941 and was the main figure on the German side of this deal. The question I asked myself for today's talk was, can this special connection between AP and the Nazis already be detected in September 1939 during the German attack on Poland? What photos from the Blitzkrieg in Poland were published in the American press? Do their credits and textual context show the perspectives of both sides fairly, Germany and Poland? Here you have I quote, the first picture of the German army actually going into action against the Poles. New York Times, 2nd September 1939. And it sounded like a football uh, match that the American public couldn't wait to begin. And this continued, uh, sorry, this is a bit small. Here you have uh, different photos, Nazis escort Polish prisoners from the front. So you have a lot of these photo matches uh, from the original German propaganda photo then uh, disseminated into the American and, in fact, international press. These examples, I could show you dozens of others, show you how news photos from Poland in September 1939 from the German side made it not only into the still neutral American press, but also into the British press within days and sometimes hours. Most of them through the Associated Press network radioed from the Berlin AP transmitter to AP headquarters, New York, and uh, from there they were spread all over the United States uh, and also sold, of course, to neutral countries as well. The high quality photos were usually printed in the German press before they appeared in the American and British press, but the much more, I would, much more important, I would say, the much more, uh, the faster AP radio photos were usually published uh, in the American press even before the Nazi press itself could print them. After the German attack, compliments were paid to Josef Goebbels and his propaganda ministry in the Time magazine. We've already heard a quotation from the Time, which analyzed very harshly the propaganda strategies of the belligerent states already on 18 September 1939 in a longer analysis. Time complained cynically about the propaganda mistakes of the Allies, whereas the Nazi propaganda was praised as much more refined. 
I quote, in line with British belief that false hopes should not be raised, French troop movements on the Western Front were reported with so little detail they sounded downright dreamy. While Germany's propaganda ministry exulted over the capture of each unpronounceable Polish town and handed over photographs of Hitler at the front, Hitler comforting the wounded, Hitler sitting in an automobile, Hitler peering through a telescope, Lord Macmillan at first clamped down on all wire and radio photos from London. Against this background of a very active Nazi propaganda and, in fact, as you can see, a strong anti-Polish bias in the American press, I want to shed light on two events during those early September days in 1939 and how AP dealt with them as media events, especially through their visual sites and news photos. The first is the alleged destruction of the Black Madonna in Czestochowa, the second the conquest of Krakow by German troops and the German guard of honor placed at the tomb of Marshal Piłsudski. The first case, Czestochowa. The Polish news agency, PAT, announced on 3rd September 1939 that the monastery of Czestochowa has been burned by German troops. At least that is what the British newspapers uh, reported in September. Goebbels wrote in his diary on 5th September 1939, I quote, the Poles do crazy atrocity mongering especially the fairy tale of the destroyed mother of God statue in Czestochowa. It is everywhere in the world press. I arranged for the American journalist Lochner to be brought to Czestochowa by a bomber plane and an SS escort so that he can see and report himself. This way, I hope I can kill this lie. Everything happened very fast in those crucial September days. Already on the next day, Goebbels noted in his diary, Lochner was in Czestochowa. Now he is telling the world, this way I kill the most dangerous British and especially Polish lie about atrocities. The Poles have opened up a real factory for creating lies about atrocities, but that won't help them anymore. It will just hurt them. And indeed, Louis Lochner, the chief correspondent of Associated Press in Berlin, produced AP news agency material that was used in hundreds of American and neutral newspapers worldwide. Like this example from the Minneapolis Star on 6 September 1939. It's the same photo that uh, also appeared later in the Time magazine analysis, was printed hundreds of times. And here you see, uh, of course, all the interesting aspects, uh, Black Madonna bomb, Black Madonna unharmed, very unusual, and even for uh, the standards then, very unprofessional was that the correspondent himself appears on a news photo to verify it, in this case, in the interest of one war party. The AP text further explained that these false news were reported from Warsaw to inflame the hate of the Polish Catholics, but that now, with Lochner's objective and neutral reporting, the Third Reich clearly won a victory in this propaganda war. At the same time, the text mentioned, frankly, the background of Lochner's trip to wartime Poland. I quote, from Berlin, the Nazis flew Louis P. Lochner, standing at the right in the picture above, to Czestochowa to see the shrine intact. Today, this picture was radioed from Berlin. The Black Madonna affair as one media event in, the propaganda, in this propaganda war of September 1939 was already analyzed convincingly in the Time magazine as an example of the bad allied and the fairly good German propaganda. The general, and it, it says here in this Time Magazine article from uh, late September, a bombing boomerang, Associated Press uh, headline. The general propaganda situation was portrayed by Time Magazine in this way, I quote, 24 hours after German troops entered Poland, neutral newsmen had photographs of German troops on the march. 
Tanks, big guns, bombers, ruined villages, prisoners wounded, mutilated bodies, charred houses, refugee children, smashed bridges, all added up to create an impression of overwhelming military strength, dramatized the speed of German advance. And the quote continues, but not only striking photographs and detailed accounts of the capture of cities demonstrated Dr. Goebbels' swift work. 48 hours after Poles announced that the holy city of Czestochowa had been bombed, high-speed operators had photographs of Polish women and children worshipping at the shrine in the presence of a German soldier. And Times continued in, his, uh, in, it, in their analysis, this piece of propaganda hit three ways. Defensively, it gave the lie to Polish charges. Appealed to neutral opinion was an attempt to convince Poles that Germans were really their friends who respected their relics. Basic Nazi technique of systematically shocking and sickening the population, making it apathically submissive to totalitarian control was worked hard. There's not much to add to this part of the analysis from Time magazine from 18 September 1939, apart from the fact that all these Nazi news photos were distributed via AP and their AP radio network system. Without AP, Nazi Germany could have never succeeded in this propaganda war of September 1939. The second case, Krakow. The conquest of Krakow as a city and the placement of a German guard of honor at the tomb of Marshal Piłsudski. Again, Associated Press and their worldwide operating radio photo, wire photo system worked as the main channel for this propaganda coup of the Nazi regime. On the very day of the conquest of Krakow, 6 September 1939, the German media and propaganda were ordered to report from an honor ceremony at the tomb of Piłsudski with all means, press, photo, newsreels, radio, and transfer all media material to Berlin as fast as possible. Because there was the AP transmitter uh, uh, in Berlin at that time. Here you have the AP report already from the very day, 6 September 1939, the fall of Krakow, published on 7 September in the American press. This ceremony, with several German generals attending, was reported through this and other fast AP reports. The photo illustrating the German guard of honor at Piłsudski's tomb was followed some hours later. For the international public sphere, this photo of a German propaganda unit turned smoothly into an AP wire photo, as you can see here. The German propaganda strategy concerning Piłsudski was, like uh, the Black Madonna affair, uh, even openly discussed by critical foreign correspondents, like Otto Tolicius in the New York Times. So don't get me wrong, there were uh, a lot of uh, American journalists uh, critical or even hostile towards Nazi Germany. And one of them was Otto Tolicius of the New York Times. He believed that the honor guard uh, at Pilsudski's tomb was just part of a generally more conciliatory attitude of the Nazis towards Poland, but just for tactical reasons, he said. The German propaganda move to praise Pilsudski, it really was really a campaign, while invading Poland was quite cynically analyzed in the New York Times on 12 September 1939, the unknown author interpreted that the guard of honor show in Krakow apparently symbolizes that the only good pole is a dead pole. Yet all of this anti-German critique was not printed on the front pages of the American press. On the front pages, you had pieces like this, like the Pizutsky tomb photo. Uh, here printed in the Washington Post, and its political message reached its goal by spreading all over the American newspapers and journals and all newspapers uh, in neutral countries that paid for the AP service. The Pilsudski celebration of Nazi propaganda continued throughout September 
And the according photo material was, was always sent out from AP Berlin via the radio photo system and printed in the American press, now with Hitler himself joining this bizarre German Pilsudski cult. And this is from the New York Times, I think. We also have it in dozens of other American newspapers. It's just examples. To conclude, the American press, especially AP, walked a thin line during the German occupation of Poland. AP did not take sides officially, of course, but key journalists like AP's chief correspondent in Berlin, Louis Lochner, went at least one step too far by going on special missions for Josef Goebbels and his propaganda ministry to report the facts, like in the case of the uh, Czestochowa Black Madonna. The story was true, but it helped to hide crimes that could have been investigated and reported instead. With the big visual reporting of the Wehrmacht Guard of Honor at the Pesutsky tomb, AP definitely went into the Nazi propaganda trap. And AP distributed dozens of similarly powerful Nazi propaganda photos in September 39 alone as AP radio photos like this one showing Polish prisoners of war carted off like cattle with no dignity left, whereas you see German soldiers in fine style re representing both victory and order. The AP wire photo transmitter in Berlin and the willingness of AP headquarters, New York, to distribute German propaganda photos immediately after their arrival was a great advantage of, for German propaganda and Goebbels made full use of it during the attack on Poland. The fast AP radio photos in September 1939 spread in the American newspapers and all over the world served the German propaganda interests. They did not simply fulfill the desire of the American public to be the best informed public in the world, a slogan you could read a lot at that in those years, uh, because they mainly transported the German propaganda message only, whereby the Wehrmacht would fight a noble and just war and even protecting national monuments like Czestochowa and the Pesutsky tomb, respecting military honor. Reporting the fact that these two monuments were indeed safe, AP contributed to, uh, to the camouflage of the overall truth of mass violence and war crimes during the German attack in September 1939, and also during the following occupation of Poland. Hence, AP supported the main German propaganda uh, aim at that time, to keep the United States neutral and out of the war as long as possible. And my, uh, my thesis is this was no coincidence or mistake, but it was a logical, structural consequence of the super stable cooperation between AP and Nazi Germany, which even lasted from December 1940 on, onwards, secretly, until April, May 1945. That's why I would call AP the most loyal ally of the Third Reich. And you won't be surprised, most of the people of the Nazified AP office in Berlin, all of the men joined the Waffen-SS after December 1941, continued to work for AP well into the 1970s and 80s. Thanks a lot for your attention. Very well done. Thank you, Madison.